Hi all, please welcome to this brand new part, part 5 of AC305. We are looking at real certification questions on designing Microsoft Azure infrastructure. If you have still not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned to a bulk of cloud certification contents around Azure, GCP and AWS. Let us jump into the questions. See your company, they are deploying so many virtual machines. Some on-premises, some on Azure. Now, they are using Express Route between on-premises and Azure for connectivity. So, this helps you extend your on-premises networks into Microsoft Azure Cloud using a private connection. So, it is just like your AWS Direct Connect where uh, the existing internet connection is not leveraged. Special set of cables and wires are laid down between your on-premises office and Azure data centers. The need is you want to analyze the network traffic so that you identify packets are allowed or not or denied by the virtual machines in order to do that they are giving you a solution to configure monitoring agent and dependency agent this is not monitoring agents are not used to monitor the packets this there is a different solution for this okay so the answer for this would be no it will not meet the goal so this would be the final answer see you want to generate a monthly report of all the resource deployed in your azure subscription what should you do with the monthly report from where will you get this like you want to know hey last month this month who gen who deployed what resources through the arm deployments so activity log will give you that activity log is one place which can give you this so this will provide you insights into subscription level events that is what you want you want to get insights into your subscription level events so in this example for example activity log you get this information like when a resource is modified on a virtual machine is started so this is more or less what we need here so option A would be my answer, but let us look at other options. So for example, you have advisor. See advisor is just like an advisor. It will give you all guidance on Azure best practices. So it will give you step-by-step -step guidance on quick actions for fast remediation, cloud score to assess, alerts to notify, but it will not give you what was deployed through the ARM deployments. So this is wrong. Let us also look at analysis services. This will give you models. So if you see this, it is a fully managed pass service, which will give you enterprise create data models in the cloud so here we are not talking about models we are talking about activities which will help us identify what was deployed now let us look at option d monitor action groups so action group helps you define a list of actions to execute when an alert is triggered here there are no alerts being triggered the question is not talking about any alerts being triggered it is just like a database trigger if anything happens you set up a trigger like if the sale transaction gets cancelled you set up a trigger to in uh, to inform people it is something similar to that in this question we do not have anything which is talking about alerts so this would be my final answer see you are designing a large azure environment that will contain many subscriptions and you are planning to use azure policy and the question is asking like which to which three scopes can you assign an azure policy definitions was what is azure policy first see azure policies if you want to implement a policy you use azure policy it will ensure that the resource state is compliant to your business rules without concern for who made the changes or who has permission to make these changes so you actually you are automating the policy application across your organization so what are the three scopes where you can define these policies one is subscription so this would be my answer subscriptions and management groups and then resource groups see management groups are containers that help you manage access policy and compliance across multiple subscriptions so this is what we need and then we are talking about resource groups so it is virtual in nature it is just like a container that holds resources to an uh, to an azure solution for example finance team if they have two vms one database then it will keep those in a resource group so that from a container perspective we know that okay this resource group belongs to finance team this resource group belongs to hr team this resource group belongs to it team now option a this is wrong active directory administrative units so an administrative unit is a uh, act ad resource that can be a container for other ad resources so if you have some ad resources you want a container for that that is why it is used for that is not a place where you apply the policies your policies are not applicable there and then we have azure active directory tenants see tenants are reserved ad service instance that organization receives and owns once it signs up for this service so see you can still have i'll tell you you can still have applications which is not making use of active directory for example you are just playing around you just have some uh, trial instances or vms and you are just playing around so why will you use ad 
that is why the policies are not at ad level the policies are at subscription management groups and resource group level so this would be my final answer so people if you have not subscribed to my channel please hit the subscribe button stay tuned to the certification contents around aws gcp and uh, azure cloud if you have not hit the join button below this video this is your opportunity please hit the join button and become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member this will give you unlimited access to a lot of extra certification content which is very important to clear certifications that will help you guarantee success as usual please focus on the concepts and do not mug the answers see you in the next part